Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is Arborea by Alley Cat Games. This is a 1-5 to five player game that takes 90 to 120 minutes to play and is for ages 14 and up. And in Arborea, you are playing as a guiding spirit attempting to fix the realm, create your own ecosystem, utilize your workers, travel across these tracks, and gain valuable resources. Gain new different creatures to add to your ecosystem and create your ecosystem, scoring you valuable points for completing tiles and resources as well as your ecosystem all in and of itself. This is a worker placement tableau management grill, grid building game. It's a large game. This is definitely in their more complex or advanced line and it involves quite a few steps but it's simple once we set it down. There's a lot of stuff present on this board here. We'll cover how to set the game up, how to play, and then of course my review. You ready? Let's go. To set the game up the first thing you do is you take out the main game board and place it within reach of all players. It's a really big one and it actually plays down instead of portrait it goes like uh, vertical ways, each player is going to get their own player board as well. Let's start with the main game board. The first thing that you do is you take all the tokens and you randomly select six of them. They're these little square tokens and you'll place them on top of the critter section of the game board. Take your little sun tokens and place one on the space that is based on the number of players playing the game. The farthest top left is five players, the next is four, three, and then two. There is a solo mode to the game that's separately in the rules, which will be explained in some other video by somebody else. Take the last two of these sun tokens and place them on the final large sun on the top right hand side of the game board. Then you see that there's four tracks here. These four tracks have uh, two of these uh, vertical uh, rectangular tiles here. Randomly mix them up and place them down on the game board and always make sure that the empty spaces is always facing inwards for the game board which means that the little location with the black white meeple never has a an icon on it. Well, two on each of these guys here going from left to right and right to left depending on the side of the game board followed by checking out the rest of the bottom of the board here. There's a spirit tracker based on the play, uh, who is playing first, second, third, and fourth, will determine where they start on the spirit board. The first player will start on zero, the second player will go to two, and then there's a four, and then there's a six, and if you're playing five players, it goes to eight. Uh, the farther on this track here, the better, and if you are uh, last place, you'll have the highest amount of spirit to start the game off with that you can utilize in the game. The bottom left hand side of the game board here is your resources and there are six different valuable resources in the game that are a bunch of various different types of coral. There's also as you note two of these uh, rectangular pieces that you'll put together to make a symbol of a piece of coral. Place them in their colored locations based on the game board on the bottom left. Then you're going to have these circle locations underneath the circular colored icons. Randomly select four of the circle tokens, flip them face up, and place them in these four different areas, along with at the bottom of the game board, one cube for each player that is playing the game. Then you have the scoring. Everybody starts with a token that's on the bottom right-hand right corner that has a zero. And if you are playing with multiple players or with the deluxe version, you'll use these extra special tokens. And then, of course, make sure you set the extra tokens in the zero spot next to the 100, 200, and 300 area to increase your score as the game goes on. As you can note, this is a large scoring game. Once you've done that, then you're basically done with the setup for the main game board. Let's look at the main other area, which is your player board. You'll have your own player board. You'll have at least eight cubes to place down on the cubed area in the top left-hand corner. You'll have two black meeples, three white meeples, and then two big and one small meeple in the bottom section of your game board. You'll start with one of the orange cards on your right-hand side area, and you're also going to start with this bonus card here that's randomly given to you that's going to have different little ecosystem uh, like locations. And there's a total of six on each of the cards. These cards will be placed on the left-hand side of your game board, whereas the cards that you're trying to get will be on the top, and the ones that you've currently already gotten will be on the right-hand side. The last thing you'll need to note is that you're going to get a player reference, which will indicate scoring for your ecosystem, and that there are four decks of cards here that you'll shuffle up with the different colors and place them within reach of all players. Once you've done that, set aside anything you're not going to utilize, such as the extra expansion game boards, or if you have the modular pieces, you can put all that aside, any of the extra little circle tokens or square tokens that you're not utilizing, and just keep the animals separate and face up in these little, these little tray areas so that you can utilize them when the game begins. After that, you're basically ready to play the game Arborea. Let's talk about how to play. So to begin playing Arborea, the first thing you need to know is that there is a pre-setup phase, then you have four phases in a turn for a player, and an end phase, and it's going to pass from there. The pre-setup phase is actually quite simple. 
First, the player who's in last place, the green player here, would take one of their meeples and place it onto the game board in the space that has a little red arrow indicated by the black slash white meeple in any of these locations on the four different little grids here. When you place your meeple, you're then going to move the board. So for instance, I'll just take one of my purple meeples here, and I, it always has to be placed in the from the bottom section of your game board. You'll never place them from the, the top sections, whether it be the black area or the white area. And you will place it down, and I'll just choose this area here. I place it, I move the grid one space inwards to the game board, and then I pass. And the next player will do it, and the next player, and so on and so forth. So that way each player has already a worker on the game board before the game begins. After that, the pre-phase is set up and it's done, and now you're just going to simply play the game. Choose the first player in the game, which in this case is going to be purple, and then go in clockwise order, taking care of all the phases in the game up until the end phase, in which case it'll pass to the next player. They'll do all their phases and end phase and pass. Also note too that the end phase can be done literally while somebody else is taking their turn. It's usually only going to involve you and your game board and cannot be influenced by anybody else in the game. So let's talk about the phases for the game now. Okay, so the four steps of play. I'm playing as the purple player and he's going first and I've already done the beginning step, which is having everybody place a worker down and advance the track. On the first step, which is the pilgrim step, a pilgrimage step, you're going to be placing one of your workers down on any of the tracks or you can advance one of the tracks. So if I want, I can take one of my workers and place it down on either the same track I placed before or on one of my other players uh, spaces here. And then of course, that would be the end. If I want to though, depending on the number of players in the game, I can actually spend two or three energy to take another action, either placing another worker down or advancing a track. So if I wanted to, I can spend an extra two uh, spirit. I would move down on the spirit tracker here on the board and place another worker down or maybe I'll advance the track again. And then that would be the end of the step. Also note too, whenever a track advances, no matter in what step in the game, whether it's your turn or not, you may take your worker off and uh, basically place it down on the board. So the tracker can move at any point, and when it does, you can choose to get off of the train, basically. And if you do, you'll be spot spotted on one of these spaces here. Each of these four different areas is gonna have two separate areas, north or south, that you can go ahead and get off of, adjacent to the space that you're in on the path after you've advanced. Each of these areas is gonna give you different valuable usages uh, throughout the game when you choose to activate them. And you never have to choose to activate them, you can always be on that spot. Remember though that these spots that are off of the train or off of the track that advances can have multiple characters in them. So pilgrimage is pretty simple, place a guy, advance a track, either one or both if you spend these, the resources. And then of course, if you wanna get off after it moves, you can. The next phase is phase two. It's time to activate workers. You can choose to activate two workers of your choosing that are off of the track, that have advanced and move off and were placed in one of the north or south sections. And you'll be able to go through those tracks and moving along and collecting any of the valuable bonuses that you'll get until you reach the end of the track. If you want, you can spend two more spirit to activate a third worker, which will come in handy sometimes, but is not as prevalent as the first bonus action. Uh, choosing to activate a worker is pretty simple. You'll say, I'm going to activate this one, and you can do it in any order that you'd like, and then you'll move down the line on the track, doing all the bonuses. And there's a ton of bonuses in this game. We'll go over a few right now. The first ones are that you can move a worker, uh, black or white, uh, down from their top areas to the area of the pool in which you can take from and place down onto the tracks here. Uh, they have a little symbol of either a black meeple or a white meeple indicating, just like on your board, which side they come from. And remember, whenever workers leave the board and go back to your board, they're always going to go back to the pools where you cannot actually gain them. They're not actually accessible. Um, so there's a ton of them here that give that value. Now, uh, another thing that you can do is actually place a worker. It's going to have the same symbol as the one where you're placing on the track here. It's the black slash white meeple with the arrow. That'll let you place another worker from your play area. Uh, additionally, at the end of every track is going to be a little lightning bolt symbol with a bag, and it's also going to have a symbol. That's going to let you activate one of the different areas on the game board here, representing all the different deities that are going to assist you throughout the game. All that means is if you have a bag there uh, with a number, you'll activate that space that number of times. So if I have a purple cube on the one on the purple area, I can activate the purple area one time, provided that my thing says activate purple. So I'd activate purple, and I do one of the four things which could be taking a card, gaining a resource, gaining some spirit, or moving and placing workers down. And for every track, you may not place one of these little guys down onto the bag space, 
uh, you will only activate. So if you do not have a specific cube on the bag spaces, on the numbers there, you cannot activate it. Instead, there's actually symbols that have a bag with a little arrow, red arrow pointing down. That is what's gonna let you choose any of the eight different areas to place your bag on the one space. And if you already have a bag on a space, like I have this yellow bag on the one space, and I get another bag symbol, I can choose to either take a new bag and place it somewhere else on a one space, or I can choose a pre-existing one that was already at one or two, and move it one to the right. So it can go from one to two, or two to three, which just allows me to activate the space and gain multiple benefits. Never the same one, but you're able to choose multiples of them. Some other ones are gaining resources. So if it says to gain a red resource, for instance, I might actually move the red resource up that number of spaces. So I gain three red resources, I'll move the top portion of the, those red um, rectangles that create a square, I'll move the top portion up to symbolize that I have three red resources. And you'll do that for every single resource that you can gain. And there is, are, are a bunch of them on the bottom portions of here, and it just has the symbol located, it explains it. So like this bottom area, it'll say like, you'll get a, an animal, and then you'll get a green resource, and then you'll activate the green area if you have a bag there. And then you're gonna simply return this guy back to your game board and put it in the spot that it needs to go in. Uh, additionally, there's also going to be uh, animals. Animals, there's a wide variety of them, they're over here. Whenever it says there's an animal symbol or icon, with a sun on it, you'll take that animal uh, from that specific type of icon and place it on the animal board in the top left hand corner. If you place it on one of these little rectangle square pieces, you'll gain the bonus. If there's no rectangle square piece, you'll gain the benefit that it says on the board here. And they could be giving you spirit, they could give you victory points, and you could have up to three of those animals on the board. If there's ever more than three, you cannot place any more. And whenever you place an animal, period, no matter what in this entire game, you're actually going to be moving the sun tracker here. That's how you determine how the game ends. So as each animal move, is placed on this game board here, these animals are going to increase the time or reduce the time allotted for the game up until the point where the sun gets to the very end, which will signify the end of the game. So that is one way in which, that's the, that's the main way the game is going to end. So getting animals is gonna be a thing that happens on most of these game boards here. Uh, there's other things in the game as well that will allow you to grab these little cards here and place them in the top portions of your game board. These are cards that you have to spend the resources on the bottom left on your turn in order to basically utilize them and place them on the right hand side of your game board. Um, and when you do gain them, you'll place them there and you can only ever have one card. At the end of your game, or at the end of your turn, I should say, you'll flip these over and add them to your tableau. And so yeah, there's a bunch of different options you can have. There's first of all, north and south, and then there's the different pathways you can take and what they give you, okay? And that's basically how the step two works. Activate the workers on the board, move them through the paths and take all the actions. Step three is to activate your ecosystem card. You may choose one of the cards in your top portion of your game board. You may spend the resources from the bottom left board, whether it's from resources that you have previously unlocked on your, on your turn or resources other players didn't spend. And you may place them on the right hand side. When you do that, you're gonna gain the bonuses and the bonuses are on the top of the card here. It might tell you to gain a spirit and to draw a new card, or it might tell you to gain a white meeple and place it down below. And there's a bunch of other valuable resources that you can gain or, or useful items that you can get from doing that. And so you'll be able to activate uh, any of these cards here as long as there's a space that's open by spending those resources that you gained. The fourth step is to update your biome and advance the pilgrimage. Updating your biome is pretty simple. On the bottom left here, if you notice any of the resources that you gained that you did not utilize, you will move basically those, those square pieces or the rectangle pieces from the bottom up to where you gained them. So let's say that I gained three red resources and I didn't use them and or couldn't. I would actually move the bottom portion of the red token now all the way up and I'll gain all the victory points from the bottom to the top that I can see in my victory track. So it's basically like saying, I can't use these, so I'll gain points, which means that somebody else at some point throughout the game will use them. Might be me again, most likely it's gonna be somebody else. So that's why I gained the benefit of victory points because I was unable to use the tokens or use the resources in order to get the new card. After I do that, there's one last thing to do on my turn before I pass. I advance my tracks. Any of my tracks that have a meeple on them or a worker, I'll advance one space towards the inward side of the game board. And if at any point this game board pushes off one square of the track here, that track is gonna move back. And if any workers are on there, they're going to be pushed down onto any of the spaces that you choose from these tracks here. Because whenever you get off, you can always choose to go to a space that's farther back. 
Another thing to note too is whenever you finish uh, a worker, they basically that worker goes through all the steps and phases of all the different actions, it's going to return back to your game board. The big guys are always going to go to the bottom, so they'll always be available for you to utilize. Whereas the black guys and white guys are going to be placed either in the top left of your game board or middle left and middle right of your game board. And you'll have to gain them from different various ways, whether it be by cards, whether it be by the little tracks here, to push them down to once again be able to utilize them for the next turn. And that's the basic steps and phases of a turn. The last thing that happens is when you pass your turn, it's now your opponent's turn, the person to your left. And while that happens, you can take any card that you have gained by spending resources from the right-hand side of your game board, and you can start to create your ecosystem. You'll be able to take that card and place it down uh, in many different patterns. As long as it is horizontal or, uh, or vertical, up, down, left, or right, it can cover any number of spaces, etc., etc. You can place it down. Additionally, if you've gained any creatures, there's ways to gain creatures, there's a little paw print, so you can take them from this board, place them over here, gain some type of spirit, and it'll tell you on the game board how that works. Place them on the right-hand side, top right-hand side of your game board. You can take those guys and place them on your ecosystem. If you ever have any guys that are on the far left, which happens when you don't utilize your workers, you may take one of them as long as you placed on this turn and put it on your ecosystem. And creatures are pretty simple. You have this little card here that explains how you score victory points with the creatures. The pink guy says that as long as you have any diagonal spaces on your ecosystem, these different locations that are pink, you'll gain points at the end of the game, and so on and so forth. Some of them have bonuses, uh, such as if you have this orange guy, as long as there's a vertical or horizontal uh, pink guy that's near it, that's going in that direction in any, in any length of ways, you can gain additional bonus points. Some of them will score you points for different biomes, and others will score you, or in, and all of them will score you double points if you have any of the water symbols in your biome that are adjacent to the character. You're always placing your critters in the middle space, um, creating a two by two grid, and nobody else can utilize, none of your other animals can utilize that grid once you placed an animal. And so you're only going to be able to place a number of critters down as you place down cards. So be aware of that. More cards allows you to play more critters, which will score you more points. Once you've moved the card over there and utilized any creatures you have on the top right hand side of your game board and push them all to the left for the ones that you couldn't use or take one from the left and actually place it down if you place creatures this turn, then your turn is over completely and other players are taking their turns and you're just going to wait for your next turn. And they're simply going to go through their steps and phases, one through four, plus the end cleanup and so on and so forth. And as that happens, this tracker is going to move as animals come out up into the point where it hits that last sun. When that happens, the player who hits that last sun space is going to take these two markers, symbolizing the last two turns of the game. When it hits their next turn, they'll lose a sun, and when it hits their final turn, they'll lose their last sun, and then scoring begins. Scoring is actually very simple in the game. There's actually a little track on the bottom of the end game phase that explains how you'll score. The first thing you note is however far you are along based on the victory points you've gained from various actions and not spending any resources uh, will be where you are. And then you're just going to go through these last endgame steps. A, if you have creatures in the left-hand side of your pool here, you are going to uh, lose spirit. Then we'll check your spirit tracker. However far you are on the right-hand side, we'll score you bonus points. And left-hand side, you'll get negative points. Uh, but then we have this area here, this middle area. Uh, there are various ways you'll be able to push them up, and that's mainly by stepping on these steps uh, on these tracks here. So all these tracks have little symbols on them. And whenever you place a meeple on them, you'll move up on that track, and there's four various colors, red, yellow, green, and blue. And there's also um, ways you can get them um, from the cards here and maybe the other various actions as well. Those are multipliers for the bonuses. In this case, it might be for every uh, step you have up on this track, up to a max of eight, you'll score that many points multiplied by the multiplier. Um, and so these guys here will get scored individually as well. How many of this specific creature do you have multiplied by how far you went on the grid and so on and so forth four times. And then it's your critters. You'll check your ecosystem, you'll check all your critters, and you'll score them by following your steps on this player aid card. Uh, and you'll do that for every single creature in the game. After you've done that, you're going to have a huge score, and whoever has the highest of those huge scores is going to be the winner of the game or Borea. All right, so I gave you the basic idea of the game. There was a lot of things I probably didn't cover as far as all the different little small things, but I think you get the idea of it. Let's talk about what I think. I'll give you some other little pointers as well.
The first thing to note that I want to talk about with this game is that while you do not get a card reference other than just the one that scores uh, tells you how to score victory points for the critters, which I really wish they did do. I really wish they either put the quick reference guide from the back of the rule book on this or even just this little area on the board, which is another quick reference guide on here. Uh, it, it, there's a bunch of different ways you can see how the turns play out and they're very quite simple. In fact, you can even look on the game board here. It's like advance or place. That's the first phase. Second phase is activate two. And they also have little bonus symbols as to how you can spend your spirit in order to move. Uh, then it's can you complete a card by spending resources. And then finally, if you didn't spend the resources that you gained, you'll score points for them, let somebody else use them and move your tracks with the meeples that you have currently on them. Pass, do your stuff with your ecosystem as well as putting critters on them if you can, and then rinse and repeat. Moving this along when critters are gained from this area here, when critters are found by placing down and activating your creatures and moving along with the game board. It's a really quick, simple system once you get the hang of it, but by God, this board is crazy looking. This board has a a lot, and I mean a lot going on. And because of all the colors and shapes and symbols, you have to learn them pretty profusely before you jump into this game. You wanna know what you're doing, what each of these boards represent. So I'll give you a little few hints and tips, just so that if you've already got this game and you wanna know like, just what the heck you're supposed to do, well, let's talk about it. The bottom area uh, of these, two tra these four tracks, the bottom two areas here are all about resource gathering and placing down critters. Uh, you might be able to gather some other resources in other ways, but the main ways are from these tracks here. Bottom left will be the pink ones, bottom right will be the green, up top left is going to be these uh, red ones here, and then the top uh, left is going to be the yellow and purple, and there are all of these six resources. Blue ones are wild. If you ever gain blue resources, you can use them for literally anything, so just keep note of that. So there's only actually five here on the board, two, one, one, and one. You can gain blue ones primarily from spending the spirit that you gain on the top left hand side bottom portion of this game board here and there's a cost to it but it is wild so that's nice uh, additionally too like I said this top little area here which gives you blue it's also going to give you critters it'll give you a way to place bags but there's a cost to them then we have over here this is how you gain new workers normally you only have these two big guys and a small one to start with which will go away to get more of them back which you'll want to do because these guys private with little bonuses and they also make sure that you keep resources and workers going while we have workers out you'll need to take a look at the top left hand side of the south section then you have the left and right hand side of the north sections this one's going to allow you to gain critters and place bags out. And this one over here is going to allow you to refresh the cards here. If you ever get a refresh, you'll take the top card from every single one of these decks here and you'll remove them from the game. And then you'll have new resources that are going to be applied to these cards as well as bonuses. And you can take those instead as well as not only refreshing them, but that's how you gain cards. These cards are used for your ecosystem and you need them. When you need critters, the top left. When you need cards, uh, the top right. When you need workers, the bottom left of the top. And when you want something special, it's the bottom right of the top. All the rest is resources and critters in the game. I know it sounds complicated, but it is actually dictated so that it kind of makes sense when you start to get a feel for the game. Another thing to note too are the bags. The bags are kind of complicated. When placing a bag down, you may place it on one, and you can also move a one to a two when you get a bag. But when you activate a bag, you must already be there and it must already be on that location. You cannot place a bag with the lightning bolt symbol that has the bag. It's only to activate, hopefully, a location that has a bag that you've placed on it. So be aware of that. When you move across the game board to as far as you go along the track, that's going to let you activate a better worker position, giving you more actions or better actions, but it takes longer. So time is investment in this game. The more time you invest, the valuable uh, actions that you may take through going through this. Don't forget too that when you don't use resources, you still get victory points from them, and you can use other people's resources when they didn't use them to place down cards into your ecosystem. Another thing to note too, probably one of my final tips to the game is do not neglect the middle bottom portion of the game board. This is the multiplier board. It's big, big points at the end of the game. Each of these different little circles is gonna involve a different way to score points. Maybe it'll be however many frogs you have on your game board. Plus, if you've moved up on the red track five times, you can score eight and then multiply that by five. If you have eight frogs there and you have a multiplier of five, you can get a 
boatload of points in this way. So do not neglect this. And of course, don't forget, I guess this is another little small scoring tip. Your spirit matters. You should spend it early on. And at the end of the game, you should try and save it because the farther you are along on the track, the more points you will get. And if you're low on the track, you can score downwards of negative 20 points. So just keep that in mind as you go through the game. So what do I think of Arborea? Well, this is a colorful, beautiful, vibrant game. And uh, that has a lot of things going for it and a lot of negatives going for it. New players are gonna be pushed off from this game trying to understand how it works because it is a deeply complex game. There's a lot of stuff going on on the game board and it's hard to kind of follow. Little spaces with bigger meeples makes it a little bit of a challenge. And while I do love all the components and pieces to the game, I do think it is a very high quality game with lots of little inserts that you can take out and utilize. Being not able to place multiple meeples on a space that you can actually place them on and only being able to place one on a space where you can actually put two can make it confusing for new players and make it a little confounding there. The variables change throughout the game, which makes it a little uh, hopeless when a new player is starting to play board games. So definitely not a game for new players. It looks like a kid family friendly game. This is not a family friendly game. This is a deeply complex game. Even on the side of the box, on the bottom of the box here, it says this is the advanced line of their games. So just note that Arborea is pretty advanced. And also note that uh, it's gonna look complex and there's gonna be a lot going on, a lot of different spaces you're gonna have to take care of, but really you should just focus on the one, two, three, four, five different areas on the game board. And if you do that, it's gonna make things a lot easier. Uh, each thing that you're doing throughout your turn, you might forget. There's a few mechanical steps to this game. So other than those minor things, uh, I think you're gonna enjoy this one. It's just, I wanna make sure that the audience knows what type of game this is gonna be for. This is not a little kid family game. You're gonna jump on this and think it's like Everdell and start going at it. This is much more complex than that. So, okay, now the positives to the game. It's beautiful and the artwork is wonderful. I love the fairy tale theme. I love the, the different gods that you're gonna kind of try and go and, 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 and work for and access and get your bag in with. Uh, the different workers and how they function, where they can be placed and how they work is excellent as well. The timer makes sense when you gather creatures. Creatures fill the land and whenever you know the ecosystem is happy, that's enough creatures that have come out, then the game is gonna end and trigger. And there's a ton of different ways you can see how the turns work if you get confused. Bonuses are abundant in this game. Whenever you place a thing on a thing, you're gonna score a bonus most likely, and those always feel really good. Placing your cards out are great because A, you pay resources, you get a bonus. You use the card, you place it down, you add your creatures on there and you get a bonus. And so there's a lot of different variables you have to decide on in this game as you choose the different types of landscapes, the different types of creatures you're utilizing, how you're building in your grid, how you're utilizing your resources and where you're placing your meeples. So those of you guys that are interested in a deeply complex game with a lot of vibrant thing are gonna really love Arborea. Um, also to note though, that because there is so much complexity in the game, for some people this can feel fairly mechanical and you have to do make sure that you go through each of the steps and phases because for those of you who do not and you miss some of the aspects of the game that you could utilize, such as even the bonus actions and whatnot, that can be detrimental to you and cost you the game. Even as little as missing spaces that have these bonus symbols on them, which can give you bonuses to your multipliers, you don't utilize them, well, that's also a game ending mistake in Arborea. And if you like that type of complexity, which I do, you're gonna love this game. My only real gripe for me personally is I hate the board. It's too much stuff. The spaces are too small. I almost wish this board was double the size with double the size spaces, just so it's easier for a guy like me who wears contacts all the time to see everything, especially from across the game board. But that's really my only complaint. I just fear for people and audiences to see this and think it's a light family friendly game and jump into it and go, oh my God, what did I get myself involved in? But for any of you you guys out there that are moderate to heavy gamers, advanced gamers who want a vibrant, pretty game, uh, get your wife's to play. Now, this is gonna be a really cool one. This is gonna be like, a, it's hiding a really heavy, thick, thinky game involved in a beautiful exterior with tons of fantasy theme to it, being able to make your own ecosystem, having the different op options of not only placing down cards to create your ecosystem with different locations and the creatures and how you place them matters and where you place your different workers down, all of it, love it, love it. I love the fact that there is expanded content to the game. I didn't even get into this yet, but there's additional Kickstarter content that will allow you to utilize this fort and sailboats. So now you're actually gonna access the river here. Um, or if you want, there's actually additional 
spaces or tracks that you can now utilize as opposed to the basic ones. Heck, they even have a whole modular aspect which can change the way you can gain bonuses in the game. So there is going to be content for you forever in Arborea. If this is a game that you like and feel like it's going to be something you're going to play, this is going to have a boatload of replayability. The games are long, they'll take up the whole game night so you can enjoy yourself with just one game if you're a heavy gamer. So if you're interested in all the stuff that I've talked about, hopefully I've given you a wide explanation and understanding of this game along with kind of the things that you got to watch out for if it's not for you and things that you might like if it is for you, then this is something to definitely take a look at. <laughs> Alley Cat Games, I was not, I was surprised when I jumped in this, I was not expecting this type of of strong, thinky, challenging game with tons of options. But there you go, Arborea, links down below. Thank you for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Arborea by Alley Cat Games. Like I said, you know where to go to see the game. And if you did like, you can, if you appreciate and enjoy our content, if you think we've done an amazing, spectacular job like I know I have, hit that subscribe button and the bell notification button. It's a button right next to the subscribe button. It's a bell that notifies you when our videos are made because sometimes being subscribed is not enough to get notified of when our videos are made. If you'd like, there's an Instagram as well. Brian puts out new content reviewing other games that aren't ours with images and a ver uh, like visual representation as well as it's in text. So maybe you don't want to watch my face all the time. You can check out the Instagram and our Facebook um, as well as our website, unfilteredgamer.com. We do blog posts as well, and even giveaways. We give away a lot of the games we get uh, monthly, so if you're interested in that, do that as well. All right, guys, that's all I got for you this time. And as always, I, uh, I hope to create a new ecosystem in Arborea with you and your friends and family next time. And there's a solo mode of the game, too. I didn't even talk about that. Find that somewhere online. It might be cool for you.